Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about the interior of the planet Venus. Now here we're a little bit at a disadvantage. The big reason is that we don't have any direct observation of any seismic activity, no measurements, no readings. And the big reason for that is in order to do so, we would have to land instruments on the surface of the planet that could actually measure any sort of vibration on the surface, like we did on the moon, for example. But we can do that with Venus because no equipment would last more than a few minutes under tremendous, horrendous conditions that we find on the surface of Venus. After all, temperatures are about 460 degrees centigrade, so that all circuit boards would pretty well, well, the solder would melt, the components would fall out, and the equipment could just not withstand that enormous heat. Also, the enormous pressure because of the atmosphere, which is more than 90 times the pressure that we find on the Earth, again, equipment would have to be built extremely strong and we have the sulfuric acid uh, present in the atmosphere that would also be very corrosive so under all circumstances it would be extremely difficult to land anything on the surface and take any sort of readings so at that point we're really at a disadvantage but we can make some reasonable assumptions about the planet the fact that it's almost the same size as the earth a little bit smaller and the fact that we also know the density of the planet, which is just slightly less than the density of the Earth, we can probably make some reasonable assumptions about the interior. We believe that just like the Earth, there's a crust. In this case, the crust is not broken up in the tectonic plates, but a single crust engulfing the entire planet, a mantle underneath the crust, which is basically made out of rocky kind of material, and a core which is assumed to be metal. For the planet's density to be 5.243 grams per cubic centimeter, it would have to have about the same proportions of metal and rock as the Earth, so we assume that it's about 50-50 metal and rock. Not by volume, but by mass. Now, even though the density is less than the density of the Earth by a significant amount, that's partially caused by the fact that the planet is somewhat smaller and therefore the compression at the center, the pressure at the center, has to be somewhat less. And because the pressure is somewhat less, assumed to be about 24% less than the, at the center of the Earth, things would not be as compressed together. So the uncompressed density between the Earth and Venus are probably very, very similar. The compressed density, you can see, it does account for the fact that there's more pressure at the center and things are compressed a little bit more, which means that the compressed density of the metal at the very core is probably, well, not probably, certainly higher than it is uh, on the Earth than it is on Venus. Now, of course, we already know that there's no evidence of plate tectonics because there's, there's simply a single, a single crust around the planet. There's no crack that we can tell, so there's no plate tectonics. And we can also assume that part of the core is molten, just like on the Earth. Hmm, why would we assume so? Well, again, there's a lot of similarity between the, the planet Earth and the planet Venus. Even though Venus is a little bit smaller, it's nevertheless almost the same size as the Earth. So we assume that the, the planet would be cooling down at roughly the same rate, especially because the surface is so warm, so it would be more difficult for heat to escape from the, from the planet. And so we would assume that the same kind of conditions exist inside Venus as inside the Earth, because the, be the basic makeup is about the same. And since the Earth is partially molten at the center, we assume Venus is partially molten as well. But then there's a very strange result from that. Typically, when the planet has a molten core, it creates a magnetic field. A combination of motion inside the planet and the planet having a molten core, that combination develops a dynamo effect. And the dynamo effect would cause very strong currents to exist, would create a magnetic field. We don't see a magnetic field on Venus, which kind of contradicts the assumption that the core is molten. But then on the other hand, the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, and we know that the core rotates at a slightly different rate than the planet itself, which of course would cause kind of a sloshing inside a planet, creating those conditions for magnetic field to exist. Venus rotates extremely slowly. It makes one rotation once every 243 days, roughly speaking. Wow, that's very, very slow. And because that very, very slow rotation we believe that is probably the reason that even though there's a partially molten core, we assume there's no magnetic field. 
to speak of. So we, we really don't measure much of anything as far as magnetic field on the planet. So we do see a magnetosphere, we'll get into that somewhat later, but there's no self-generated magnetic field. Now there's an interesting theory about the rocks on the surface of Venus and the crust, especially the hardness of the crust. Now, the crust is extremely dry. In other words, there's virtually no water contained within the crust. Also, the top rocks of the crust are very, very hot. And we don't know if the heat goes far into the crust, but we also know, of course, that the interior is very hot, a very hot surface, a very hot interior. We can probably assume that the rocks throughout the crust end up being fairly warm. And we know that on the Earth, when we, when we dig mines very deep into the, into the crust, several thousand feet down. We do know that it gets quite warm down there on the Earth, so we probably have a similar kind of condition on Venus, probably even more so. So we did some experimentation on the, on the Earth. We took some rocks, Earth rocks, and we put them in the oven and dried them out at very, very high temperatures for a long period of time, trying to simulate the conditions that rocks would experience on the surface of Venus. So we kept them at many hundreds of degrees centigrade or Celsius, Somebody asked me once, why do I use centigrade? Well, it's centigrade and Celsius degrees are the same thing. So at very high temperatures, under a lot of pressure, again, because the pressure on Venus is more than 90 times the pressure on the Earth. And that combination, after they'd done that for a while, they would then do some testing on the rocks. They would put them inside presses, try to compress the rocks. And what they found was that the strength of the rocks was about 10 times the strength of a typical Earth rock. In other words, it required 10 times the force, 10 times the pressure to try to disintegrate a rock that otherwise easily would have been disintegrated on the Earth. Assumption is, because of the conditions on Venus, the very hot conditions, the very high pressure conditions, and the, um, the very dry conditions, the assumption is that the rocks on Venus are absolutely incredibly powerful, uh, not powerful, but incredibly strong, require an enormous amount of force to be deformed Part of the reason, maybe, why the craters, the impact craters that are formed on Venus look so pristine, because perhaps the rocks, after they're formed and after they solidify and dry, they're probably enormously strong and it requires an enormous amount of force, enormous kind of erosion type of activity to be disintegrated. Matter of fact, you could probably only erase them through massive volcanic activity. Another reason why we think we have these planet-wide volcanic events that kind of wipe out the surface and resurface it. So that's kind of interesting. We don't know a lot about the planet as far as the interior uh, condition, but through assumptions and through experimentation and through making comparisons to the Earth, we do have a fairly good idea. We could be all wrong, but we think we're right about what it must be like on the surface of Venus and in the interior of Venus, at least structurally for a planet. And that's how we know.